All right, folks, it's been a minute, hasn't it? Well, it's been two years, actually, since I built this. And as you can see, I've still got it. There is a reason for that, and I'll get to that in a minute. But before I do, I've got a little project I want to do on it. So this is a little mock-up of what I want to do. You see, because this is my daily driver. And being a practical man that I am, I often get asked to fix and mend things. And I often have to use this expensive camper van as a van for putting tools in and stuff. So I want to build this kind of fold-down camper van liner. You know, a bit like a boot protector, but for a camper van. So I needed to build this to understand how it would all fold together. So, why no more van build series then? Well, to understand that, you've got to first understand how vans make it to market. You've got your van manufacturer, you've got your van franchise dealer. They're both separate companies. The van manufacturer manufactures hundreds of thousands of vans and the van franchise dealer can't shift all of them. So the manufacturer has to go to the lease companies who then sell them on to large corporations like Amazon and van rental companies and even camper van builders. And that was great. And then this happened. Good evening. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. Bugger. The van manufacturers have to shut down, so the price of vans slowly starts to creep up. <laughs> Covid comes and goes, we all get back to work, and now everybody's screaming at our van manufacturers to churn some more vans out to fill these back orders. However, Putin decides to compound the problem by invading Ukraine. So now we've got an oil crisis, we've got a material shortage, there's a microchip shortage, and there's no way of getting these vans out. So now the demand for vans gets even higher, and the price slowly creeps up yet again. So now we find ourselves in a situation where there's really high demand and low numbers of vans in the system. Um, and those that are in the system are being prioritised to the franchise dealers. Understandably, the lease companies aren't getting a look in. Uh, so uh, last year when I wanted to get hold of a van, the lease companies didn't have any. And those few that they did have were at such a high markup that the numbers didn't make sense. Uh, to give you an idea, I bought a Peugeot Boxer in 2017 for £17,045. The exact same van today costs uh, £31,450. That's a markup of 85% in five years. And that's just silly. So the numbers don't quite make so much sense at the minute. The prices are coming down a bit. They are starting to get a little bit more sensible. And the new Ford Transit Customs is looking great, so I would like to get my hands on one of those in the future. But currently, they're in high demand, so the prices don't make sense. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comments if you've managed to find any cheaper vans to do your conversions on. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. I have to say, though, bugger the tools. That's the configuration for me. And if you've not seen it already, just click on the box to watch the video series for this van build. Ta-da!